today at the potter we're going to be making something with three feet hey class welcome back mr g here your online art professor today's project that we're getting into again is from the great pottery throwdown oh wait it's not today this one is coming from another art teacher who i'm, I'm just doing this whole summer series on ceramics and i love getting clay stuff into you guys's hands and, and just coming up with some new fresh ideas for you guys this one is by mr p he's out of singapore jeff Pab Pabatoy. That sounds right. Uh, he teaches over in Singapore, and I've texted this guy several times. Love his work. I'm doing several pieces from uh, his collection, so stay tuned to more pieces. The number one thing I gotta do, tell, say first on this guy is, dude is awesome. Dude is is a master pro in some of the stuff that he makes, and so go check him out on Instagram. Check out his feeds. Check out all the stuff that his kids are doing. Fantastic stuff. I'm I'm so excited to be doing some of those pro these projects. So, but yeah, his Instagram definitely hit it up. I've got the link here. So for this project, he made a three legged vase and I want to get into how that actually happened okay so before I get into showing showing the, the rest of this off I noticed something in the way that I was filming this as I was building it my card got corrupted I missed the entire section where I was doing all the detail carvings into into the piece so let's go over that real quick as I went in, I wanted to, I used the handles in here and uh, my handles were drying out for a couple days so they do have some cracks here I know this just I'm working on it. Uh, also, most of the pieces that I do like this, and as I said before in another project, I like to make pieces for the kids so they can see what we're making. I'm really bad at glazing myself, my own pieces. So I usually just build and then recycle. I do keep some stuff, but this is definitely gonna probably be another recycle piece. So on here, pieces where I use an X-Acto knife to cut out different levels of the clay. So using the X-Acto to cut out those lines on this one. For the next one, using just a simple rounded trim tool. Looks like one of these, just to pull out different bits. Uh, as I'm doing this, I'm slowly rotating around so I got a north and south pattern to it so that I have uh, a cool indentation. I will say what I like about this one is if you add running like a glaze that's got a, like a lot of frit in it or if it's got some gem pieces that you can kind of put in there maybe if you did even glass bits and did them at the top and had that where it drips down that flowing effect on this pattern always looks really well and last but not least just doing another variation on kind of a combination of the two where I'm cutting into the piece carving out different lines of it and then using a needle tool or you can use uh, the exacto knife to cut in line so you kind of have like this faux mandala-esque uh, paisley pattern to the outside edge here and I just think that overall it comes out really cool I'll probably extend this out a little more before I either fire this or trash it I'm not sure, exactly sure but just want to give you guys a full rounded for, portion for this vessel last but not least I do have a lid the knob that I'm that I was building for this flaked off at least twice but uh, I did make a lid piece for this and it fits right on top nice and smooth so it comes out really well. Again, all of this pieces here, this was done entirely not on the wheel. This was done by hand on a banding wheel. And that was the only thing that I was using to make it round. So giving that, getting that centrifugal force. All right, so now I want to go ahead and start working through this project. Now, I did make my own little 45 degree, 60 degree carving tool, just a piece of fish, fishing line on a piece of cardboard. Now for this piece, as I said, Mr. P's ceramics class that I was watching does a really cool job of making this solid out of a slab rolled piece of clay so what we're doing is we're taking that for, forming into a cylinder first once we've got a solid cylinder and we've marked it from the inside and the outside smoothed out all those pieces notice i'm using several different ribs here uh, i have a wooden rib that i'm using currently along with a sponge and a plastic rib when i'm making the three feet notice how i used the piece of a, uh, a rolling pin and what that do does is provide me just to give it that three feet kind of press in it doesn't have to be dead perfect you, you might mess it up the first time or two that you do it right now it's more of a test things out and see how it goes key is once you've got those three pieces together smoothing those pieces out you definitely want to make sure that all of your joints where the clays are touching together that you have a little bit of slip in there is it necessary for a slab piece i definitely would use a little extra slip reason being is because you want to ensure that you are having consistency across all those pieces and that the moisture content in all those pieces is the same uh, now for this, again, I'm using my hands to form everything out. For the lid here, I'm sorry, for the, the base construction, I want to add in a piece of clay and I'm using a one of my tools to flatten it down on the inside so I can have it flush with the baseline, tapping it down on the board so, ever so slightly just to get it knocked into place. Then using tools to smooth out the different portions added together 
and finally using the rolling pin to finish off all of those different components where it's touching itself what i'm also doing here is i'm using it to round out uh, if you've ever used a i think it's called throwing spoons or throwing stick we use wooden spoons because we're cheap uh, back in college, we would go to Dollar Tree and we'd get wooden spoons and we would use those to help form like a more bulbous interior uh, of our vases. So we'd use that to help form as they're pressing into our hands. Switching it over to the banding wheel so I can again make sure that as I'm mo moving pieces around, I'm slowly rotating the piece at the same time. That's going to give me a more 360 rounded piece overall. So everything is uh, still kind of being built. On, on the concept of using a wheel. Everything is going in centrifugal force and using that centrifugal force to help manipulate the clay a little better. Now, up front, do not be shy with using the rib. That, that by far is like one of your best tools. Uh, it helps for shaping, helps for smoothing, and you wanna make sure that all those pieces are, are done properly. measuring here for the lid what we're going to do is we're just going to once we smooth out our clay because you know you roll the clay out on the slab roller you're going to have that those marks in it using a sponge to smooth that out and then just using again my hand kind of toss it around like a pizza in my hand and getting that disc shape that's going to give me that nice shape that's going to be that's going to fit properly on top of the vessel and just using again centrifugal force of the bending wheel spinning it around so i can get that that lid secured up there just a little more clay now i want to make a lip for that top lid and the reason we want to make a lip is just so it sits in there a little easier uh scoring out that area with i've got a wooden tool that's got some scoring lines on it makes it easier uh if you can i highly recommend buying get the metal one that has like the the mini teeth on it so you can score with that it just works a lot easier once you've added on that extra lip of clay, lots of slip, and then going around smoothing the pieces out. I like using the uh, the brush method here with my slip in general, especially when I'm building larger pieces. I think overall it makes things a lot faster. For all my students out there, if you guys, if a teacher puts out brush and slip, it, it does work a lot better. Uh, to me personally, and that's what I do recommend for you guys. Fettling knife just to clean up all of the weld areas where all the clay pieces are touching. And then just tapping it down just to level the piece off. For this, I was going to do a knob. Uh, I've done a couple knobs on, on the top of this piece. For some reason, they're just never adhering or drying out properly and i 100 percent am blaming water level that's in my clay uh the clay that i'm using here i've recycled a couple times and it's just it really needs to i need to break it down a lot more and re and just kind of start all over like fresh ground dirt and start off with that the reason being is it's just not working All right, that's where I'm going to be ending class today, guys. I hope that you got something fun out of this experience. Again, great pottery throwdown. The people that I'm finding online on IG, go check out their websites. I'm putting all their links in the descriptions below as well as uh, the great pottery throwdown. I think they have a YouTube channel even. Go out there, show some love to these guys. Try and get pottery more into the into the wheelhouse of everybody that we come across i love clay it's my thing i definitely want to do more of it and i definitely am going to continue to do more of it so pausing on class today but before we go let's go not forget our homework which is like subscribe share and all the various platforms get the message out there to as many teachers friends students we possibly can educate the masses that is always my goal uh don't forget if you guys had a question comment or concern raise your hand in the comments below happy to answer those questions with my classmates as always i will see you guys next class so until then later guys